the Syrian Arab Republic for his statement. Syria, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. My delegation adds it, its voice to the statement made by the distinguished representative of the Republic of Azerbaijan on behalf of the non-aligned movement. The statement delivered by the distinguished representative of the State of Palestine on behalf of the Group of 77 and China. My delegation would like to make the following observations in our national capacity. Allow me first to welcome my dear friend Bruno Rodriguez, Foreign Minister of Cuba. Let your friendly country Cuba be fully confident that the Syrian Arab Republic will always support the steadfastness of the people and uh, the state in Cuba in confronting uh, the unjust embargo imposed by the United States since 1962. Syria will not forget uh, the position of our friends in Cuba in support of Syria and confronting the terrorist war that we have borne for nine years now until today. Syria will not forget the position of our friends in Cuba in confronting Israeli occupation of the Syrian Arab occupied Golan. Furthermore, my country is proud that so many of our young women and men were educated in medicine, engineering, and other specialties in the excellent universities in Cuba, which are a beacon for knowledge and science, despite the unjust embargo that has gone on now for close to six decades. My country, Syria, is confident that condemnation of the embargo, the economic trade and financial embargo imposed by the United States of America on the Cuban people is no longer sufficient, particularly in light of the policy of escalation of the current U.S. administration tightening the embargo where its effects go beyond Cuban borders now. Let me, uh, in this regard, refer to the measures taken lately by the United States administration based uh, on Article 3 of the so-called Helms-Burton Act, opening the door for judicial measures in U.S. courts against Cuban companies, persons, or entities, or indeed third countries that have trade activities in Cuba. The U.S. authorities did not stop there. They have now launched a new aggressive policy against the Cuban people to deprive the people from energy and fuel through sanctions on any entity or individual who participates in shipping or facilitates the shipment of energy or fuel to Cuba, including tankers, uh, transport companies, the owners of uh, ships, and governments uh, that uh, flag those ships, as well as insurance companies. This, in addition to more restrictions uh, on uh, uh, lowering the number of uh, uh, civilian and commercial flights uh, to Cuba and preventing any U.S. flights from landing in any Cuban city, with the exception of the capital, Cuba. The Syrian Arab Republic fully supports the draft resolution in A stroke 74 stroke L6. We believe it is a clear political and legal reflection of the United Nations position rejecting the coercive economic uh, unilateral measures because they are a collective punishment of an entire people. They undermine the United Nations system. They are an obstacle uh, to achievement of the 2030 uh, Sustainable Development Plan. They breach the right of states uh, to development, and they hamper international trade exchange and uh, uh, all of the rights uh, uh, under human rights law. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are 11 years from the desired date to implement the 2030 
development plan. Nobody can argue that the economic embargo imposed by some governments on so many states in the world directly hampers economic and social development of the peoples of those states. The uh, periodic uh, uh, reports of the Secretary General, the information and analyses therein on the size of the damage uh, caused by these uh, unilateral coercive economic measures uh, imposed on Cuba make us duty bound today to seek a new approach that goes beyond mere condemnation of the embargo and calling for an end to it. And this uh, uh, through uh, requiring implementation of United Nations recommendations uh, to assist the victims of such measures, the creation of an international register of unilateral measures that affect human rights, the support of the idea of a declaration by the General Assembly on unilateral measures and the rule of law. This requires that member states that seek to use economic embargoes in, a, in, in an illegitimate way or to bear the legal and political responsibility as well as the financial responsibility for damage to the economies of states that they target through such illegitimate embargoes. Those embargoes lead to uh, the paralysis and collapse of very sensitive economic sectors essential for the life of citizens, particularly health, education, food, agriculture, and others. Mr. President, the Syrian people, just like the Cuban people, has for decades now and continues to suffer from the grave repercussions of unilateral coercive economic measures imposed by the United States and some other governments. Nevertheless, such consequences in the previous years have reached unprecedented levels. They have had a sabotaging effect on the economy and the development efforts of Syria in addition to uh, the uh, terrorist wars uh, and the uh, unethical policies by some governments uh, that insist uh, on preventing reconstruction and rehabilitation in Syria, as well as the return of IDPs uh, and Syrian refugees uh, to their homeland and their homes. We in Syria will repeat this question year after year. How can the representatives of some states climb to this rostrum at the United Nations to call for speeding up the achievement of the 2030 SDGs and calling for the slogan, leave no one behind, while at the same time their very governments are imposing unilateral, coercive economic measures against Cuba, Syria, Iran, Venezuela, the DPRK, Palestine, the Russian Federation, and other states. In conclusion, uh, let me once again recall uh, the statement uh, in the briefing by Mr. Idris al-Jazairi, the special rapporteur on uh, the negative repercussions uh, of unilateral coercive measures on the enjoyment of human rights. He said, and I quote, I am deeply concerned that these unilateral coercive measures contribute in exacerbating the suffering of the Syrian people. In light uh, of the uh, effects of such measures, the humanitarian and economic suffering, it is difficult to believe claims that they're simply there to protect Syrians or to urge for a democratic uh, transformation. End of quote. Uh, this evaluation from a high-level United Nations uh, official is a general assessment uh, that encompasses uh, uh, the tragic repercussions for peoples uh, that suffer from these unilateral economic uh, uh, measures. We in Syria believe that time has come to put a final irreversible end to the policies of economic sanctions adopted by some governments of member states. We by this, would be committed to the principles of justice, equality, and the right of all peoples of the world to development and well-being without discrimination or obstacles. Thank you, sir. I thank the President of Syria for his statement.